What's up guys, it's Ephra from B-Side. Today we are gonna do another wireless CarPlay Android Auto Retrofit Kit installation demonstration. Today it's gonna be on a 2016 to 2020 Lexus GS with factory navigation. This includes all the trends, the GS 200Ts, the GS 350, and also the GSF. And if you're outside the US, then the other GS trims as well. So what makes this video a little bit different is it's, it's much newer than the last 2016 and 2020 Lexus GS video we did and it's different than the 2013 to 2015 Lexus GS with nav installation video that we recently did a few months ago. And this vehicle and this screen is a little bit different because the screen is larger, it's 12.3 inch size and it's also not the split screen so it utilizes a full entire screen when you're in CarPlay or Android Auto mode. And in this video, we're also going to show you the new updated harness, which we eliminated one of the connectors going to the upper screen. So it makes it a little bit easier to install and less wires that you need to route. And in addition to that, um, this is wireless and we also will show you how to set up your phone and demonstrate you with as much detail as we can to show you exactly how this system works. So we're very, very excited for this new video. Let's stop talking and let's get in the car and get started. All right guys, so now that we're in the car, let's go ahead and show you what tools are needed to do the install on this CarPlay Android Auto Retrofit for this Lexus GS. So we have our 10 millimeter socket here. We're using a magnetic tool, not necessary, but if you like to use one with a magnetic um, tip, that'll be helpful so you don't drop your 10 millimeter bolts. We also have a panel removal tool. We have a, you could either use a wrench or a power tool like so. And we also have a short Phillips screwdriver for these screws up here. And we also have the longer one to remove the screws on the glove compartment. And also grab a thick towel to protect your interior while you pull all the devices out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this trim piece around here. Let's go ahead and just cover this area up really good thicker the towel the better okay you can use a panel removal tool to pry this out you can also grab the bottom corner just place your finger down there and just pull it towards you come off like so push down on the release tab with the start button and just pull out okay let's go ahead and set this aside in a safe location next we're going to go ahead and remove the trim up here so you need to grab a phillips screw like this it needs to be short so you could fit the tool down here. And then if you look up, there's a little plastic Phillips screw. So go ahead and just turn it counterclockwise. And while you're turning counterclockwise, make sure you're not pushing up, okay? Because if you push up while you turn, it won't come down. So you have to really lightly just place the tool inside the Phillips shape opening and just gently Turn it counterclockwise and you'll see the screw come down. All right, let's go ahead and remove the other ones. All these tabs out, let me grab them, put them in a safe location. And then you can just push this down and we're gonna pull it towards you when you're doing so. Be very careful to not scratch this area. If you like, you can also mask tape this area. Okay. All right, so now that we got this panel removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove these four 10 millimeter bolts there and these two 10 millimeter bolts down here. So we're gonna use a power tool. You can also use a wrench if you like. Okay, and there's one down here and then there's another one down there. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the top screen. So if you like, you could go ahead and lay a towel here as well. Be very, very careful. Let's bring it up above. Okay. And we're gonna unplug all the factory connectors like so. Next, we are gonna pull this guy out here. Just grab a hold of this, just pull it towards you, and just like that. So let's go ahead and leave that aside. Now we're gonna work on this area here. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is we'll move this side panel piece here. Just pull it out towards you. Pull it out like so. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pull this piece out. Okay, and then there's gonna be two clips here. Just go ahead and remove them. And there's also your foot wall lighting. I'll twist that off, I'll put this aside. As you can see, there's actually 
not much room behind the glove box to mount the boxes. It's very, very packed with all the factory controls, electronics, and computers, and the AC system. So, where we mount the device on this vehicle, the dip switch box, we, we will double side tape it onto here, sandwich it between the bottom of this AC device and also the under tray and the CarPlay wireless module. We're actually gonna tuck it behind here. Pull this out, there's some foam right here. And we are going to place it behind the foam right here, okay? Fits there nicely, I'm gonna push it back in. And when everything is all installed and mounted, the carpet is going to press out just a little bit more than usual, but you won't notice the difference. And on top of that, um, you might be very tempted to mount it up in the top corner. If you do, that area generates a lot of heat, so I really don't recommend it. And on top of that, it's prone to be kicked like your passenger here. I place the feet here, push it against there, kick it, especially during, if you guys track this car, some, some people might brace their body by pushing against the outside corner of there, which is bad for the box because there's some connection points like the HDMI, which can break. So please do not mount it up in the front. But if you mount it here, it will be protected by this foam, okay? Even though you push it in. So because for this vehicle, we do not have any room behind the glove box, there's really no point of dropping the glove box down. So instead of dropping the glove box down, we're just gonna go ahead and just route the cables through here, down there, and then connect the boxes and mount it to those two locations that I mentioned. If you have a different Lexus GS model and you look up and there's some room back there, then you do have to drop the glove box to properly mount the two boxes. And if you want to drop the glove box, very, very easy. You just have to loosen this, remove that 10 millimeter bolt, that 10 millimeter bolt, open the glove box. There's gonna be Phillips screw here, Phillips screw there, and Phillips screw there. And then once you remove all those screws and bolts, the whole entire assembly will drop and you could put it aside. You also may have to remove this piece here a panel removal tool here and just pop it out all right so let's go ahead and continue on to the next steps all right so the first wire that we are going to route are these gvif cables these are the video cables for the carplay android auto and let's go ahead and connect it so one side is going to be female the other side is going to be male the male side is going to connect to the screen the female side is going to connect to the factory gvif cable here like so okay and then these two back side here is going to get routed down there. It's not too difficult to do. So we're going to just go down. There's an opening behind the vent here. Let's go down there. I'm going to use our left hand behind the radio and catch the wire or the cable. Or if, we are, if we're lucky, we may be able to just push it all the way down towards the glove box. You can use an assistance of a clothes hanger, wire hanger, or some sort of wire device to be able to push this all the way down. Mm, okay, cool. Looks like it came down like so. Okay, we didn't have to put our hands down there. No, you wouldn't have to catch it from behind the radio. It actually came straight down. All right, so now we're gonna do the second cable. All right, cool, here we go. And on this new harness, this is the only cable that gets connected behind the screen. So after we route the GVIF cable, you could go ahead and put the screen back. As you notice here, the connector looks a little different than factory. This is because we have an aftermarket um, front camera adapter installed to this. That's our CS5 EP. Now actually CS5 EP is this cartridge. We have six CS11A, okay? So that's why it looks a little different. Factory one will just be this this um, connector here, which will connect, okay? But before, on our previous harness, we had a similar connector like this going to the upper screen. We got rid of it, and the power is now taken from behind the radio. So just don't panic. You're not missing any parts. You're not missing a connector or the harness. This is how it's supposed to be, okay? Like so, all right? So once we 
do this G vacuum. We're gonna go ahead and connect it. Before we do that, let's go ahead and wrap this connector with some foam tape. All right, get some foam tape, and let's go ahead and wrap this around. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it around to the factory cables or the factory connectors here. All right. Although you shouldn't have uh, any problems with it making any noise, even though you don't have it. It's um, suggested that we do by Lexus. Okay, now let me go ahead and reconnect, reinstall my screen just by connecting these two connectors here. And once again, these two connectors, this is aftermarket. This is for the front camera adapter. Um, for you, it's just gonna be this right here, these two going in, okay? So this GVI cable is from our kit and the other side is gonna go to our dip switch box and the factory connector back to its original location. And once again, this is a new harness and the only connector you're gonna do, you're gonna connect to our interface, it's gonna be that GBIF connector. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and just leave it there for now. All right, so we got the two GVIF cables coming down here, and now let's connect the connectors behind the radio. We'll start off with this big one here. CAN wires are already gonna be pre-configured, but if you wanna double check, the brown wires are gonna connect to each other, okay? And then the red one here will connect to the white cables and also the orange ones. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this radio out, and we're gonna release this connector here. Just push down on the release tab, like so. I'm gonna push it out this all right and we're gonna just daisy chain this to our kit and the other side is going to connect to the vehicle all right so once that is out we've got a few connectors and cables that we need to route to the glove box area which is going to be this main connector here to our dip switch box we got our microphone cable and we also have our power cable. I'm gonna go behind this radio screen. When you're routing this, try to route it behind this bracket. And when you're routing this too, although I'm pushing all the cables through at the same time, you can also push it in one at a time and just take your time to do so. And when you're routing it, make sure you have a clear way to this area. If your wire gets hung up on anything, gets stuck, do not just yank it and force it through because you may damage the wire and it'll rip it, which will not be good. Then you may short the system or the system will not work. Okay. All right, here it is. Okay. And next, let's go ahead and route this auxiliary 3.5 millimeter harness. So we'll go behind the screen and it's going to be this connector all the way to the a left right here this one right here okay this will be plug and play like that or clip in place if you have a hard time connecting it in just angle a little bit this way and then push it in that sometimes helps and the male side will connect directly like that and then let's go ahead and route this 3.5 millimeter audio from behind the radio to the glove box area, like this, okay. All right, terrific. So we got our cables routed, and let me go ahead and carefully push the factory radio back to its original location. All right, sweet. Okay, so now that we got all the cables down here, let's go ahead and make our connection. We're first gonna do our dip switch box. Uh, first, the, let's go ahead and just double check to make sure your dip switches are correct. This one's 168. You also have a label here that confirms the dip switch setting. Just go ahead and double check. Make sure you don't actually knock it or change it while you're doing the install. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our GVIF cables. The one that's labeled GVIF out is going to be connected to the inside. And the one that's labeled GVIF in will be connected to the outer side. And this is all written on your written instructions wiring diagram. You can also refer to that as well. And we have our main harness 
try to not cross wires as much as you can. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and connect this here. All right. Again, we're gonna connect our HDMI cable. All right, and then we'll just grab our CarPlay module. On our CarPlay module, let's first connect our power cable. It's this two pin cable here, red and black. We'll connect it to this box right here, labeled main power. We're gonna connect our two 3.5 millimeter cables. One is going to be for your microphone, the other one's gonna be for your audio. So the one that's labeled audio will connect to line out. That's the one all the way at the corner. Do not connect to external speaker. If you do, you're gonna get some distortion and some noise. Okay, and then the microphone in right here, we're gonna connect to the mic in, like so. All right, and then we have our RF antenna here. This is for your wireless connectivity. All right, and then we have our USB extension cable. We're gonna connect it here. And actually, we're gonna have to route this back behind the, behind the radio to our desired location, which is gonna be down here. And actually, I could squeeze it through here. And we're just gonna leave it like, like this, okay? Like this for now. All right, and this will be mounted down here, so that is a good location. And then for our antenna, we will, since this box will be here, we can either push this back back here, okay? Just mount it in the back, okay? We'll just undo the double-sided tape and just, just put it against the back side of this plastic back there. All right, let me do a quick test to make sure everything's working and then we will tidy everything up. So to test this, make sure to reconnect the negative terminal on the car's battery. To reconnect the power and after you do that, Go ahead and push the start button. I'll go through a boot up sequence. The screen might be black for like 10 seconds. Just go ahead and wait and you'll see the boot up sequence. And let me connect the USB. Connect to our phone here. Okay. Okay, once it boots up, we are going to go to our source media source and let's go ahead and select auxiliary and let's make sure of our sound settings all right and then let's go ahead and press and hold the map button okay so this is the similar screen you'll get uh, we still need to adjust the resolution on this yours is going to come with the resolution already set so you don't have to deal with that uh, but if you ever accidentally change the resolution setting Put it back to six and then press the back top arrow for the back to save settings and you do have to turn the car off and then back on for it to save to for you to see the changes all right so this is a screen you'll get and then let's make sure the songs are working okay, okay that's working siri What's the weather? It is currently clear and 90 degrees. All right, let's work in. Track up, track down. All right, seems like all the functions are working as it should. So, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the device off, tidy everything up, mount it, and reverse order everything we just did, which will conclude the installation. All right, so we went ahead and tucked in our device. Let me just show you what we did here. CarPlay module is behind here, okay? And then we mounted the dip switch box right here. And we routed the cables from here to the left. And when you're tucking these wires back here, there's a lot of room, but be careful with this heater pipe right there. Uh, if you can see it right there. Okay, that's gonna get extremely hot, so Make sure none of the cables are touching that, okay? All right, so let's keep it away from there. Once you're done routing your cables, we're gonna go ahead and just put everything back and reverse order we just did.
All right, guys, so we went ahead and we finished installing it. Um, and before we connect our phone, let's go ahead and calibrate the microphone, factory microphone to work well with our device. How you do that is first um, press the media button, make sure you have auxiliary selected and take the volume all the way to 40 and press and hold the map button. All right, and go to settings and select this uh, microphone. And first, make sure this PGA gain is negative three, OP gain, keep it at zero. And we're gonna press this. And once we press this, you're gonna hear nine loud beeps. So prepare for that. Um, during those nine beeps, make sure you're dead silent, turn off your AC, make sure there's no noise on the background. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, you saw that number change. It might not change, uh, but this will make it very specific to your vehicle. So once you finish this set setting, just press the back arrow and this will take you back to the three icon screen. Okay, going back to the factory native screen. This is the screen that you'll see when you first boot up your car. So let's go ahead and do our first initial connection. Okay, let's first make sure that your phone is connected to the car's Bluetooth. Especially if it's a brand new car, it might not be. So we're gonna go ahead and go to setup and then we're gonna go to your Bluetooth and then it says there's no Bluetooth device connected. We'll go to settings and we are gonna go to our Bluetooth and we're gonna go all the way down and wait for the Lexus GS Bluetooth to show up. Oh yeah, I gotta press add here. Okay, look for Lexus GS and confirm pin 0000, there it is. All right, there it is, 611695. We're not gonna allow the contact and the favorites because it's not our car. And once it's connected here, you'll see it on the car screen. At the same time, on your phone screen, it's going to show as Lexus GS. If you see anything else other than Lexus GS, say that this is car multimedia, car accessory, select the I button here, you could change the name and make sure you change it to Lexus GS. Okay, and then make sure it's safe, confirm that it's Lexus GS and we could go to the next step. All right, next, we are going to change uh, one setting on your phone. We'll go to accessibility, we'll go to touch, and we're gonna change the call audio routing to Bluetooth headset. So when you make any phone calls, receive or make phone calls, the calls will be routed to the car's Bluetooth and not our system. Yes, our system's phone call quality has improved and it works pretty well, but a lot of times people like the OEM feel and look of how their phone works. So you could be in any source and still pick up the phone calls. Whereas if you want to use phone calls with ours, you do always have to be in auxiliary to hear the phone call. Okay, so once you do that, go back to accessibility, back to settings, and we're gonna, we are ready for our connection. So before we do that, go to your screen and let me just lower the volume a little bit and press and hold the map button. Here's the screen here um, that you'll see when nothing is connected. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, both create out. You can't push anything in here because there's nothing connected to the device. But once we wire connect it or wirelessly connect it, it will highlight and it will launch. And you could also press the settings, but the settings, all the presets are done. Um, or we have preset everything for you, so do not change any of the settings. So going back here, we're gonna do our initial wireless connection. Go to general and then go to CarPlay. I'm gonna wait and there it is. MV17W-BT, and then you're gonna get some sort of numbers and letters combination. We're gonna pair it, I'm gonna allow this. And let's give it a moment here, about 10 to 15 seconds to connect. And going forward, the this phone will automatically connect to the car when you turn on the vehicle, but you do have to still long press the map button to switch between CarPlay and your factory screen. So once it's connected, you could lock it and once again, well, even though you turn off your car and turn it back on, that it will connect automatically when you turn on your vehicle. Um, but you do have to long press the map button to switch the screen like so. So once you have the CarPlay screen on, um, this mouse control here, once you touch it, you'll see a mouse cursor. You can push down to make your selections like so. You can also push down the screen and swipe and drag. Okay, this is the easiest way to move your screen and you could even go to your maps and you could push down on the maps and you could move around like so, okay? 
and you can also push these two buttons on the enter to also make your selection the back button works as a back button and pressing and holding and menu is Siri what's the weather it's currently clear and 91 okay. degrees and this will work as track up and down and you can also use track up and down on your steering wheel let me show you that so here's some um, YouTube up and down and we'll also use the up and down and then the volume controls work you just don't see the change of the volume and your steering wheel control volume works as well up and also down and let me go ahead and call myself to show you how the phone call works okay you could pick up here okay and you can also hang up on the steering wheel control and if you want to switch phone you do have to turn off both your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so we do have to turn off both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth from your settings to disconnect and to move to a next phone or you could connect wired so to do the wireless connection on your Android you just need to go to your settings go and go to your Bluetooth and then turn on your Bluetooth turn on the Wi-Fi as well and we're gonna look for the connection on the bottom so for when you're connecting your Android you do have to go use the Bluetooth menu but for your iPhone do not use the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi menu only use the general CarPlay menu or else the order of operation and connecting your iPhone might not be optimal so it might not make the connection correctly there it is all right cool so here is our Android Auto Basically, it works the same as CarPlay. Um, the controls are a little bit different and the interface does look a little different. But you can just swipe up and down here, make your selection by pushing down. Or you could press these two enter buttons here. Okay, you can also use your track up and track down, track up, track down, and your volume controls also work. And also your calling as well. All right, and to go back to your factory, just press and hold the map button, take you back to its original screen. All right, guys, well, that concludes our installation and demonstration of this 2016 and 2020 Lexus GS with factory navigation. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or you can email us at info at bsonicusa.com. And if you haven't yet, help us by liking and subscribing to our channel. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys on the next video.